Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast between the STC and an unknown Zerg player here on Blistering Sands. Yeah, I'm, my Korean's really rusty, as in non-existent, and I cannot read the Korean name. So I'm just going to say STC spawning over here on the south side of Blistering Sand as the green Terran player. Meanwhile, we have the red Zerg player spawning over here on the north side. Should be a pretty interesting matchup here on Blistering Sands. Blistering Sands is one of those maps where it can really go either way. There's a lot of different openings and a lot of different things that can happen. The Zerg players really like to use and abuse these backdoor rocks, start pecking away at them so that you can start doing run buys straight into the mineral line of their opponent. So that is going to be a potential and I know that STC is probably aware of that and will probably put a supply depot over here, maybe even a siege tank over here to try to protect that back door. Back over here, it looks as though Zerg now currently th what, throwing up one Overlord and then will be quickly going into 13 over 18 food as this Overlord now moves to the south. And Excuse me. <clears throat> I'll be curious to see if he tries to go for, it looks like he will be going for a 14 spawning pool as there is an earlier extractor than normal. So and you would never ever try to go for an extractor and then follow it up with the hatchery. That'd just be, um, that they actually have no real reason whatsoever. So down goes that spawning pool and there we go. So it looks as though we're going to have a metabolic boost lings at the very, very early portion of this game. Now back over here, we do have a barracks now being thrown down and most likely we, we should get a tech lab or some other building to complete this wall in right over here. Back over here, Overlord now trying to get into position. Perhaps we'll try to and position himself over here. Actually, I would have suspect the Overlord to position himself here just so that he can gather sight over this chasm without getting shot down by any Marines. This Overlord, however, will position itself right in this position and protect itself from any sort of a Marine harassment. So nicely done as another second Overlord now making its way. STC quickly doing the scouting and not finding any early hatchery will see that the spawning pool has just spawned and look at the timing on this spawning pool 100 gas there we go and now we'll be able to get that metabolic boost as soon as he gets that oh not not as perfect that 100 minerals back over here we do see one marine now out and about doing some scouting making sure not exactly what it's making sure of make i guess he's trying to look for an overlord to shoot down an overlord will be there in just a moment as now we are training up four zerglings metabolic boost still not being trained just quite yet not quite sure why he does have the minerals back over here we have a drone now coming in and that drone gonna get quickly shot down down it goes and now we have this overlord in this position will it be able to stay alive currently getting shot by one marine now trying to pull away once again we do have four zerglings now moving out across the map and those zerglings may be able to get us around no marines deciding to already retreat deciding to come back home will be able to retreat here we do have a factory now being thrown down and nothing really watching these backdoor rocks we do also have a reaper now being trained up so that reaper only takes two rounds of attack to kill a unit no it looks as though he canceled that reaper so no reaper and now zergen is going to try to do a little bit of pressure over here one marine however standing guard will be able to enjoy that firing range right behind that tech lab and this well factory now so those Zergens will not be able to push through. Back over here, we do have a Baneling nest now coming into play. So we may have a Baneling front door bust. And this front door is going to be very susceptible to it. There probably should be a bunker now being placed down. And the bunker needs to be played, placed down just because um, and the Baneling can do some sort of run by very easily. And oh, very, very nice canceling that Baneling nest after the scanner sweep goes. So we're going to see a bunker now being placed over here. And STC is going to ex expect some sort of baneling play and now try to defend for it and now th this is going to be a good time to go into tier two yeah so going into tier two and they now may transition into mutilus and that would be very strong as um hellions are most likely going to be trained up with that infernal pre-igniter in order to deal with um what he thought was going to be banelings and a lot of zerglings there is one hellion sitting over here that hellion with a range of six or sorry range of five able to deal a lot of damage back along over here fairly easily Back over here, we do have that Zergling with that Metabolic Boost now. And that Zergling with that Metabolic Boost may just, just try to test this front door. Kind of make STC believe that he is trying to go for some sort of baneling bust and really just hold back over here so more zerglings ask just continuing to take that damage over here there are some hellions now moving over here most likely assuming that the baneling bust is going to be coming in just a moment hellions going to move out no the hellions not scout out that position that's a little bit of a surprise and oh hellions now getting a couple quick toast on those units there are we going to get a surround on those from those zerglings zerglings now trying to get around those hellions hellions moving at 4.25 compared to 4.7 and those hellions now in trouble no infernal pre-igniter just quite yet 
But no, there we go. And now, uh, now as that Infernal Pre-Igniter is finished being researched, that's going to be very, very bad time. Yeah, that one Hellion getting seven kills right there. And those units now finally pulling back. We should be seeing a Spire now. Yeah, so going into a Tier 2 Spire and getting that second Extractor. The key question is how much gas will he be able to harvest at this time? I'm assuming there's going to be about... Uh, maybe five to six mutilists by the time um by the time this gets up just because it will take an additional what 80 units of time and that will allow you to get about 350 additional gas from two extractors back over here zerglings is continuing to play around and um, getting underneath here we do have that viking now moving out and trying to do some scouting as well so this one 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 play against the zerg player is working out fairly well as these hellions are going to be here to counter those uh, zerglings and now we also have a viking in the air that may be able to cause some sort of trouble and issue for for those overlords and as soon as those overlords are going to start getting popped it is going to be an economic issue as well we do see a queen now coming in over here and no i'm a little bit surprised that there is no oh in comes the queen queen hellion trying to fight back even further and oh beautifully splashing all of those zerglings one queen coming back in over here overlord spawning that creep as those spine crawlers now coming into position we should see a creep tumor momentarily and now we are just continuing to spawn more and more lar larva and here we go spire going to be completed at 400 min 400 gas we'll be able to get five mutilus in just a moment as it will take about another 15 units of time to harvest that last 50 back over here we do see a command center now being placed down by the stc so the stc even though he was playing very defensively trying expecting a baneling bust he still played very well and after he didn't see that baneling baneling bust ex expected that there would be a lot of mutilus and now already getting that thor out so that thor is already out and we also see a drop ship so that dropship may be able, will be able to pick up those Hellions. Those Hellions definitely need to be repaired, though. As the STC now I'm training, I'm getting a second factory. So, yeah, what we have SCVs coming off the line in order to repair those Hellions. Hellions getting, what, 15 kills, 10 kills. So a lot of kills just stacking up on those Hellions. As now a second Thor being trained. Um, the Zerg player is just going to have a, um, a horrible day now trying to do any sort of pressuring tactics. Um, one Thor with uh, two or three Marines will be able to easily clean up the rest of those units. And with that range of, oh, nine, going to take down one of those Mutalists. Very cool. Oh, no, not going to be able to splash that. There it goes, splashing one of those Mutalists out of the sky. And that Thor already getting 100 minerals and 100 gas kill there. Back over here, we do see some Zerglings and some Mutalists once again. Um, just trying to establish an expansion over here as the Zerg player realizes he is in trouble. There's a bunker down over here as well. So really, even though he does not have an engineering barrier, that bunker with a range of six formed those Marines, able to deal so much damage, and another two Mutalists getting splashed out of the sky. And Zerg, I believe, has to say GG. Um, STC just playing such a beautiful game at this stage in the, uh, at this point that there's not much that the, uh, that the Zerg player can really do. Now training up more Hellions, so those Hellions will be able to just handle those those Zerglings very, very easily. The Thor Hellion com combination, a very, very deadly combination, just because those um, you, yeah, yeah, and there we go. Our in comes the GG. So, yeah, that Thor and Hellion combination is a very, very strong combination indeed. Um, one of the things that I would like to see a little bit more is perhaps uh, um, getting some armor upgrades on those Thors and on those Hellions. What you really, you're gonna really be facing up against a lot of oh, drones back over here. Wow. So apparently I missed um, I missed a drop over here as I was watching. So in comes a scanner sweep and now three Hellions now coming in. So those three Hellions coming into this position and let's see how many drones he gets killed. So at 28 drones at the start of this fight, down to 24, down to 23 and now down to 20 already and now get down to 16. So yeah, those Hellions just worth their weight in worth their weight in minerals. 16 kills, 10 kills, 26 kills on one of those Hellions. So yeah, those Hellions really just tipping the scale and Zerg realizing that he was unable to come back. But back to the commentary. And really, I, I really like this play. Hellions and Thors against Zerg. It handles a lot of the things that a Zerg player can really throw at you. Banelings don't work out, work out nearly as well as Thors are able to shoot down some of them before they get within that deadly splash distance. And those Hellions are able to torch those Zerglings and those Hydralis fairly well. And as soon as you get that armor upgrade on those Hellions and on, on those Hellions and on those Thors, those Zerglings, even when they try to surround and swarm and take down a Thor, that Thor with that such thick, already base one armor, able to take so much damage from a Zergling that it doesn't really even matter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between OG, um, OGS's, the STC, and an unknown Zerg player here on Blistering Sands.